this video, I'll be doing some filming with two Samsung Galaxy S3s. However, one of these phones has been converted over to a full spectrum camera by removing the IR UV filter. A little bit of a contrast difference already. Here, we're gonna be doing some laser experiments today. Whenever you see that, laser stuff, definitely. But first, some comparison between light bulbs. This LED light bulb, as you can see, doesn't put out much IR. You can see a little bit of green and red from the filter effect that I tried to put on to block out some white light. This 20 watt spiral compact fluorescent looks pretty white, but underneath the modified camera, you can see just how much of the IR is put out. This 13 watt black light bulb looks pretty normal, but underneath the modified camera, you can see quite a bit of IR and UV come through. And now, on to some laser. This small red dot right there. There's actually a laser beam traveling through here that you cannot see because the infrared filter is still on its own. But what about if you could see it the way it actually is? As you can't see, infrared laser light can be very powerful. How powerful can it be? We'll just wait and see. The dangerous part is because you can't see it, it won't activate the blink reflexes of the eye. Therefore, the infrared light will still get to the back of the retina and burn it. This is unfortunate. Let's do that again. So in this case, the laser light is hitting the black material. This causes the atoms in the material to vibrate and become in a liquid state. Kind of like how a microwave works, but instead of using gigahertz, it uses terahertz. Oh yeah, there it goes. With Speaking of cooking, here we have a fire, and as you can see, underneath an unmodified camera, it looks pretty normal. With the infrared and ultraviolet filter removed from the camera, you can see just how much the radiant energy is produced by a flame, and it is quite a lot. Some tools and appliances use a wire inside to the top when electricity is applied to it. Here, you can see on the heat gun that the wire glows orange. This is because the light is being produced as the atoms are being heated. As you can see, a lot more IR is being picked up by the modified camera. Here, the same effect on a hot plate of metal can be seen. Underneath the regular camera, it looks pretty dull. In fact, you can't see hardly anything. But the full spectrum camera can see all of the IR light being ejected. Here in this area is an 808 nanometer laser diode used for pumping these two crystals in this little block here, which converts in the IR laser light into green laser light. Underneath a normal camera, you can see the green beam in the fog just fine. But underneath our modified camera, that IR can radiate through the crystal and outward. Here's the side profile to give you more an idea of what's going on in the optical path. On a normal camera, we have here on the left a CCSL backlit LCD, and on the right an LED backlit LCD. And on the modified camera, you can see just how much IR comes through the panel compared to the LED backlit one. Here we see another strange phenomenon. What's going on? An IR laser is being projected against the LCD panel. What this does is forces the fluid out of a polarized state briefly. You can see I move around the beam, and the distortion follows. It's a really interesting effect. This is a 473 nanometer GPSS laser head manufactured by DW10. It's rated for 10 milliwatts of 473 nanometer laser output. What you don't often get to see is the 2 watt IR pump diode that lays inside. This is an 808 nanometer pump diode and goes through several optics. I'll be talking more about that and other lasers in upcoming videos. But for now, here's a side view of this amazing piece of technology. Coming up in later videos, how long will it take to destroy this camera? The Electric Cube artistic project between electricity and light. Turning iPhones into fry phones. More laser experiments and laser rebuilds to come. 